to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. Sometimes we wonder about play calls, but this would make perfect sense to me. He's got the only touchdown that they've scored in this game. Tried to get it to him again on another deep ball. A good pick up there, a 22. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. He was looking to get it to Alan Hearns that time. That'll bring up second down. I know he wants to get his team back in the game, but a 50-50 ball right there that maybe was a little questionable. Yeah, he's pretty lucky to get that one back. I think that sometimes his quarterbacks play with a lot of confidence. The borders on arrogance, and that can put your team in some Dutch. Yeah, especially maybe want to look at some safer routes after the interception he had that ended their last drive. Throwing his Bortles on third down. He's got the hook up to Lee. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Bortles now to throw. This will be caught at about the 6. And he'll be brought down here at the 3-yard line. That's good for a gain of 6, second and goal. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what do you got to do? You got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end. Take got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. And it's up and good. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. Andre Roberts now to return it. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. They were able to extend their lead with an opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter, but that just got matched a moment ago. So we know that what they discussed at the half worked. Now, what are the counters to that, right? You don't just run the same things over and over. Some do, but many will also show something and then come back with something else to keep the defense off balance. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Back now here on EA Sports. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. Again, they'll run with Freeman. And he's got room. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield across the 45. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Ryan on the handoff. It's Freeman. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve 
that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. And this is going to be incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. And here's a big one now. Trying to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And this will depend on the mark. I'm not sure he pushed the line forward. And indeed, he did not. They stop him. Boy, you talk about not playing it safe. Why were they going for it there, Charles? It's got to be a full evaluation of their team. Do they trust their defense in this situation? Maybe they think they've given all they can in this game and they don't have anything left. Do they not trust that the other team's quarterback is just so hot that it, no matter where they get the ball, they go downfield? Remember when Bill Belichick went for it yeah. in that game, yeah. right, against, against Indianapolis yeah. on the road? And everybody said, why'd you go for it there? I think he just thought to himself, on the other side, if they hit the ball, they're going downfield anyway. He was trying to end the game right there with his own offense. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville at a first down. I like how they worked the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. The offense certainly looking to score some points, but they also need ball security here late as we get down to the final moments of this one. Throwing now is Bortles. Completes it to Hearns. Touchdown, Jaguars! Alan Hearns, his second touchdown of the afternoon, and the Jaguars have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. It's up and good to make it 21-17. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Now the Falcons' offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave them great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down, caused all of that. it caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. So now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. It's caught over the middle, Hooper. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves to James. He'll look to throw. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 11 more yards that go around. A first down as well. Offense comes to the line now. First and 10. He's back to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down. It will. So here we go, first and 10 now. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. Back to throw. And he can't hang on to it. That would have sealed it. Instead, second down. 
He was unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. An incompletion, now a short pickup. That's not going to do it. Yeah, you've got to get to the line of scrimmage quickly, get set up, and aim downfield. The Falcons on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and seven. They'll look to throw. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Read it well, and it's picked. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, I don't think we'll have to look very hard to find our play of the game. That was an absolutely monstrous big play right there. Backs to the wall. The offense has it in the red zone. Driving for the winning score. And he says, not on my watch. And that is one happy bunch on the sidelines. Caught right side. It's Lewis. And he'll take this one up to about the six-yard line. And now a timeout defensively by the Falcons. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Bortles going to throw here. Over the middle, the connection to Hearns. And we've got a timeout. Nine seconds remaining. Yeah, he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. So jumping from his free safety spot. That tells you how aggressive they are in defense, doesn't it? They get everyone involved. He was a little too fast on that play. Down to a knee for the Jags. Victory seemingly in hand. And now here comes their final timeout as they take it with eight ticks remaining. Back to throw, Bortles. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. Incomplete pass there is probably the best scenario going because if he catches the football, the clock's probably going to run out in that situation. The Jaguars on third down. They've been excellent. Six for seven. This will be third and six. Bortles with a knee to the ground, and that should do it. Now, I know there may be temptation to go for it here in overtime, but you have to punt the football. I like how emphatic you are about it because I know the tendency is, as a player, let's go get this thing. You're actually telling your coach, come on, coach, we can get it. We have that play call. And the head coach has to remember, that play call likely isn't there. Punt the ball away. Punt it away. Be smart. Trust your defense. Trust them. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. So long, everybody.